If you've ever tried to learn Java or C++, you'll have noticed that Python seems slightly magical in comparison. For one, in Python we can use variables without declaring their existence or their type ahead of time, and it just works. Let's take x equals 7. How should Python know that x should stand for an integer? For that matter, how does Python know what x is at all? The key to understanding this is that languages such as Java and C++ are statically typed. Python is dynamically typed. In a dynamically typed language, types are determined automatically at runtime, not in response to declarations in your code. Ultimately this all boils down to variables, objects and the links between them, and by the end of this special tutorial you'll understand what dynamic typing is, and with it, a deeper understanding of the Python object model. Taking our example of x equals 7, the variable, also known as the name, x, is created by the language when your code first assigns it a value. This variable will never have any type information or constraints associated with it. The notion of type lives with the object and not with the name. The concept of a variable or a name is a generic one, and it merely refers to a particular object at a particular point in time. When a variable appears in an expression, it's immediately replaced with the object that it refers to at that point in time. It makes sense then that variables must be explicitly assigned before used, otherwise you'll get an error. Any future assignment or reassignment, for example, if you later have x equals some string, that will change the value of the already created name. The key to making this as simple as possible to understand is to keep a clear distinction in your mind between names and objects. Let's take y equals 1. What does this mean? Well, we'll create the object of type integer representing the value 1. Then we'll create the variable name y if it does not yet exist, and then we'll have that variable point to our newly created object. Names and objects are stored in different parts of memory, but they're associated by these links. These links from names to objects are called references and are implemented as a pointer in memory. We mentioned earlier that types live with objects, not with names. In this code, a starts off pointing to a tuple, then it points to an integer, a completely separate object, and then it points to a list. This can look odd to learners of statically typed languages such as Java or C++, as it looks like a is changing from a tuple to an integer, then a list. But that's not what's happening at all. All we're doing is changing the location that the name A points to. Objects know what type they are, and this doesn't change. In fact, we can have multiple names point to the same object. When an object no longer has any names pointing to it, it's garbage collected to reclaim this valuable memory. Under the hood, Python keeps a counter in every object to keep track of the number of references pointing to that object at any point in time. As soon as the counter drops to zero, i.e. no more names are pointing to it, the object's memory space is automatically reclaimed. But what happens when two names point to the same object? Take this for example y equals x causes the name x to point to the same object that x is pointing to. This is known as a shared reference. x and y are not linked directly to each other, they are merely pointing to the same object. If we were to then type x equals string, a new object would be created. x points to it, and y is left pointing to the original list object. This does not cause y to also point to this new string object. So that's the brief story of dynamic typing and Python. This lies at the heart of polymorphism, which will be covered in a separate tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed this. If so, do consider subscribing to this new channel, which has the learner increasing their breadth, depth, and experience of Python as its core mission.